Today we're talking about the wild world of pocket wizards. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me here on Flurn five days a week. We make these videos to help you guys get better at Photoshop, photography, and life. <laughs> Today we're talking about pocket wizards and radio transmitters. Now, I'm going to show you guys pocket wizards because these are honestly my favorite. And um, I'm going to tell you a little about how I use them, how you guys can use them. But there are a lot of different other options when it comes to radio triggering. So um, these are what I use, but I want some input on what you guys use and what you figured out. So here's here's what these are there I'll just get one for you this is this is what a pocket wizard is and it's a radio transmitter basically it sends a radio signal from one of these guys to another one of them there we go you, you need two. you can't do anything with one there's totally useless if you have one you need at least two so all they do is send a radio signal between one another and you can put them on different types of equipment like you could put one on top of your camera for instance and one on a light Whenever you take a picture with your camera, it fires a light. So if you guys are curious, using off-camera lighting, that sort of thing, like flashes far away that are not at all connected to your camera, these are how you use them. Um, this is not, again, the only brand that you can use, but this is the brand that I like the most. Um, I started out the trying to go the cheap route. I, <laughs> if you guys have read uh, David Hobbies, he's got an awesome website called strobis.com. He talks about these as well. But um, I started out trying to use the eBay triggers, the cactus, whatever, and this was years ago. Um, because there weren't any, there were not a whole lot of options then, but um, they, they were really cheap and they were so unreliable that after doing like a photo shoot, like a real shoot, and they just totally stopped working there in the real shoot and basically ruined the shoot, um, I decided to bite the bullet and buy these. So the bad part about Pocket Wizards is they're expensive and you need a lot of them. Um, I think I have like eight or so and I didn't buy them all at once. Like I bought two and then I bought a third and then a couple months later I bought another one. Um, we're going to link to where you can get all this stuff below. But they really, really are great. And like this, you know, you can see like mine are, they're all beat up. Like they, they look horrible because um, I use them a lot, but they are, they're great. I've, every single one that I've had that I bought, I still use. So I'm going to show you guys how they work real quick. Um, basically, the, the simplest function, you just put one on your camera. So there we go. We're going to put one of these on the top of our camera. You go ahead and turn it on and you put one on your light as well. So here we go. It's attached to my light and you turn this on as well. Now, there are a couple different channels on these, and any kind of receivers you guys are going to have, they will have different channels. So this, these are the Pocket Wizard Plus 2s, by the way. They have channels 1 through 4. So if you want the, the camera to fire your light, what you want to do is put both of them on channel 1. So this is on channel 1, and this is on channel 1. So let's turn the camera on. And before you do anything like this, this is already plugged into this light. This is just a white lightning. Nothing too fancy here. Um, you want to hit this button to make sure you'll test it and to make sure that the connection from here to here is good. So let's hit that and it didn't do anything. So I didn't do anything because I didn't have the pocket wizard on. You got to turn it on too. Apparently uh, that's important. <laughs> there we go. So let's hit this test button. Cool. And you guys can see, hopefully it'll show up in the camera, but this light is firing now. And this is an off-camera flash. I've got another uh, speed light. You can use those as well. So that's good to go. Now. That's the connection there. Well, let's text our next connection, and that's just gonna be on top of the camera. We'll hit this button here, and you can see what it's done. It sent a magical fairy from here <laughs> to this other one, and it's telling it to fire this light, and it's, they have nothing to do with each other. This is a camera that has nothing to do with this light, but whenever I hit this button, it fires this light, which is great. Um, now, it also knows that whenever I wanna take a picture, let's just set this to manual focus here. Whenever I wanna take a picture, it'll, take exactly when this when the camera fires it's going to send a signal to this other pocket wizard which sends a signal to the light to fire so they sync automatically whenever i take a picture with this camera see it's no there are no wires attached to it at all it will fire this other light which is exactly what we want you can walk around with this all day long and it's just going to radio trigger so this is the most simple operation of how pocket wizards work um, you can put these on multiple lights and you can just like you, you could fire 20, 30, 50 lights at the same time if they're all on the same channel. Okay, so that's a very simple operation. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys with using these is with a speed light, and you can also use these as well. So a speed light is gonna have the same connection here, um, but on the side of the speed light, you have a different port. It's, a, it's actually a sync port, and uh, it's, if your speed light has something like this, you can use one. Not all speed lights actually are, you know, not are all capable. I don't think the 430EX2 by Canon has one of these sync ports, but if yours does, 
you can click on there and you just hook this up and then we're gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna test this there we go it did work and let's hit this test button on here cool and this fired as well so one of the cool thing if you don't have a bunch of these pocket wizards and I don't blame you if you don't want to buy each you know one for every single light you have um, what you can do or use what's called optical slaves and a lot of lights are built in with a little photo sensor it sees when the other lights fire and it fires as well so these like white lightings, white lightings, the alien beans, eye signs, everything by Paul C. Buff has an optical slave built into it. And most, most lights do. Um, it does have this built into it. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to unplug the pocket wizard so you can see it's pocket wizard, not at all plugged in. So this is just a light, you know, on its own. It technically doesn't even know anything is around it. But what's going to happen is if I hit this button and this light hits the optical slave, which on this is on the back, by the way. It's gonna fire. Make sure all your connections are good before doing this. <laughs> there we go, you can see. So this is, the Pock Wizard here is firing this light, and the light from this is hitting the optical slave on that, and that's going off. So if you guys are like indoors and you have like three or four of these lights, you can usually just buy two pocket wizards, one for on your camera and one for one of these lights, and the light from one of the strobes will fill the room and it'll fire all the other strobes as well. So you don't technically have to have one for each of yours unless they're like really far away. Sometimes if you're like gridding things, like if the light doesn't actually hit the, if it doesn't hit the sensor, sometimes you'll have to use, um, you know, you have to get another pocket wizard for those as well. Okay, so let's try it from here. I'm gonna take a picture and there we go. We're gonna take a picture. The signal is gonna go from here to this pocket wizard, which is gonna to go to this speed light, which is gonna to go to this optical slave, and then cause this to fire. Boom, it did it. I'll do it again so you guys can see. I'm blinding you, it's awesome. All right, so that's really cool. We're using this to fire all the way through there, that chain, which is, um, I just think it's really cool that you could do that. Now, the other thing that I really like about pocket wizards, we're just gonna unplug some of this stuff here. The pocket wizards are not only used to fire lights. You can actually use them to fire your camera if you want to do that. So I'm going to use, I've got a pocket wizard in my hand on channel one. Now this other channel pocket wizard that's on my camera, let's get rid of some of this stuff. See, I've just got a mess of pocket wizards, is, is going to be firing the camera with this remote. And this is just the shutter release cable. We'll link to this below. This is from flashzebra.com. I love that place. They send you like, they're, they're well, the price well and um, very, very quick um turnaround time like they always send stuff in like two days all right so we're going to put this in where it says camera slash flash and then this guy goes into the shutter release which is on the side and most higher end digital slrs will have these like your very low entry level digital R's, slrs usually don't have a shutter release but if you go up to like a 7d or something like that all those will have a shutter release so this goes from the pocket wizard to the camera okay and that's in channel one and now this is going to be in channel one too and if I take a picture, you can hear that. So I'm not touching the camera at all. This pocket wizard is taking pictures with my camera. Now this, for those of you guys who are interested in doing like self portraits, this is perfect. I, I know it's gonna cost a couple hundred more dollars to get these things, but they work from, I'm doing it right here, very close, but they actually work from like a half mile away. So that's really cool. You can put your camera on a tripod, focus, and then run around and take a bunch of pictures. You can see every time I click on this button, and it's it's instant. It's so good. Way much. It's way better than an infrared remote, in my opinion. So that's you can do that as well. Now it gets even more complex when you want to use one of these and your camera and the light, which you can actually do as well. So let's hook this back up. We're not. We don't need that speed light anymore. Put it away. We're gonna hook this back up. And what you want to do is kind of set a chain. So you want your pocket wizards to be on the same channel from this guy to the camera. And then you want this to be on the next channel. So we're going to put these both on channel one. And then this we're going to put on channel two. So what it does is it, it sends the signal here to there and then this controls the other light. If you have them all on the same channel, what it does is it fires the light right before the camera fires and then they don't sync up. All right, let's just make sure that that works. Cool. There we go. So now I can use this, this pocket wizard and this pocket wizard are both on channel one. This one's on channel two. And when I hit this button, now I'm remote firing my camera and that is remote firing my lights, which is also syncing back. So you can now take self portraits with just this in your hand and fire everything at the same time. And um, 
I think that's just awesome. Very, very cool. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, Pocket Wizards, these are the plus twos. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with them. I love them. Um, since they came out, they've come out with things like the Flex TT5 and other things like that. This thing's kind of a piece of junk, in my opinion. I bought it, and I was excited because it promised doing, like, you know, all, all kinds of new features with the speed lights and whatnot. And I never use any of those features. Um, so save your money. Don't, don't buy something fancy like this. I don't think you need it. And the plus twos... They work a lot better than this does as well. So um, this would be my opinion on what you guys should get if you're looking at Pocket Wizards. They just did come out with the plus threes. I haven't used those yet, but um, I think they're probably going to be cool too. I like the plus twos though. That's my, you my boys, plus two. I love you guys. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. <laughs> Guys, that's this episode, off-camera triggers. So that's what these are called, radio triggers. Now, if you guys are using other types of triggers, there's many different brands. There's Ellen Crom, Skyports, uh, Policy Buff makes Cyber Syncs. There's a lot of different brands of these things, radio poppers. What are you guys using out there, and what have you had luck with? Are there things that you know are a little bit less expensive than the Pocket Wizards for people who don't want to spend as much money that you've, you've had really good luck with? I haven't used them, so I can't speak to it, but I know you guys have, and that's what we're all here for. So let me know. What pocket, uh, bleh, ah. <laughs> what radio triggers have you guys used, and have you had good luck with them? Have you had some that you've had bad luck with, and um, what do you use them for? What are your favorite uses for your Pocket Wizards? Cool. I'm excited to read those. Guys, I'm all giddy, see? I'm, I'm just so excited. Don't forget, we've got a Facebook contest going on right now. You guys can win a free Flurn Pro and have your image made into a pro tutorial, which is going to be very, very cool. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll Flurn you later, guys. If you were a woman, I would marry you, Pocket Wizard. I love you so much.